afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm an astrophysicist, uh, but uh, not always working with stars and planets, but on climate change education. Uh, the reason for that is uh, essentially threefold. There is a need to prepare the youth for a threatening future. There is a challenge, and a big challenge, to enable the teachers in primary and secondary schools first to understand what climate change is about, second, what can they tell to their students, which is scientifically sound but not creating too much anxiety, and there is a need for a transformation of curricula, which most often, and I will show it, ignore climate change. The progress is there. But it has been slow. The issue was really raised at COP21. During the Paris Agreement, in the Paris Agreement, there is an Article 12, which is now ratified by most of the countries, and which says that partners should take measures to enhance climate change education. Uh, at each COP since 21, up to the last one in Dubai, education raised more and more as a global concern. And uh, last year, UN and UNESCO launched a Greening Education Partnership, which is supposed to be in dialogue with ministries of education, scientific communities, IPCC, of course, to foster the uh, implementation of Article 12. Uh, the current status of climate change education is not very bright. You have here uh, the latest UNESCO statistics, and you see that on the left side, the, depending a little bit of the country, it's only a few percent of schools who implement their climate change education. And on the right, you have the uh, documents which are relevant for teachers to uh, present climate change education in their school. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, OK. So we have created an office for climate education in France. Why did we do that uh, six years ago? Because we had about 30 years of experience in active science education, exactly along the line that van der Leyen Magnato uh, presented a few minutes ago, creating uh, the uh, learning by doing, uh, which we call in French la main à la patte, and at least three workshops in this academy, with or without the, the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences, have uh, paved the way to implement this uh, general science education. So climate has some specific which it shares with biodiversity. It's essentially an interdisciplinary science, contrary to the classical disciplines which are in siloed, and it has complexity. Those are two challenges for teachers. Uh, children and teenagers feel eco-anxiety. Uh, there is a famous paper uh, a year ago in The Lancet which gives uh, huge Number 70% of those uh, young people uh, feel one way or another eco anxiety, and we parents or grandparents, we know that. And then uh, the community is also concerned because the environment is uh, essential in, in the teaching. So in 2018, we created this uh, foundation in Paris, the Office for Climate Education, with the idea to help teachers and education authorities in France, Latin America, Asia, Africa, where we work. And we began in 2024 both a UNESCO Category 2 Center and an IPCC Observer. And I give the name of a few of the climatologists who are paying a lot of attention. Uh, for example, uh, Manhattan, uh, Mario Molina, the late Mario Molina, 
uh, Jean, uh, are a member of uh, this academy. Of course, speaking of indigenous culture, we see that the fraction of population uh, in poverty is essentially covering areas of indigenous communities. So that's where the need for climate education, where they are, of course, uh, responsible the less and suffering the most is more urgent. And I have circled the areas where our office is acting. <clears throat> so the principle is to start from IPCC report uh, and its summaries for policymakers. Those reports are very nice, 50 or 60 pages, but they cannot be understood by teachers. They are too complicated. Teachers, especially in primary school, do not have the time to plunge into it, so we have to adapt it. Then we have to prepare handbooks for teachers which are rooted in the science, but which are practical use in the classroom, putting the students in action. Uh, we have to accompany this with uh, a lot of pedagogical tools, and we have also to have specialized tools for professional development of teachers. Uh, of course, this has to do with in indigenous, and I will uh, give uh, three examples of that. Now, there is something we have not done, and this meeting is showing that uh, we should do it. The IPCC reports contain only what we call modern science. They are very profound, they have a lot of numbers, but there is no place, almost no place at all in those reports for indigenous knowledge. While, on the other hand, when we do pedagogy, we should take in, in account what is in the green on the slide, the deep knowledge of nature, the sense of fragility, the rich descriptive language of trees, of skies, of water, of air, and this narrative, which is in the myth versus or in parallel with the scientific knowledge, which is said is complex, abstract, which has often a lack of relation with nature, especially in cities, in big cities, with for children, and which is aimed by consumerism. So this connection makes climate education in indigenous culture a real challenge. Well, we have tried to meet this challenge in several countries in South America, and we are beginning to do it in Africa, in Kenya, in Mauritius, in Senegal, uh, by adapting pedagogical resources, which is a long process. It may take a year working with teachers, with schools, to adapt the uh, message of the IPCC to the situation of the school. Example, Colombia, working with Fondo Action, which is a deeply involved uh, group, and training teachers in a dialogue to co-construct tools for climate education, which certainly have to recognize the role of CO2, the uh, uh, greenhouse gas, but also the traditional experience of climate. And this is not so easy to do. Um, <clears throat> we are doing it in Mexico with the communities of Mazahua and Otomi Group, which have circled in that, and again, trying to, to establish a dialogue between the two approach in a module which has been a co-worked uh, introduction to climate change. A uh, third example, uh, that will be my conclusion, in Chile, and this is in the Araucanian region with Mapuche, uh, Indian populations, and you can see to the right the representation that children have from the traditional graphic description, and of course, translating that in, in uh, the uh, quantitative values for uh, example, uh, transfer of sun energy and, and energy balance of the earth is, is a challenge. Uh, <clears throat> I conclude with this slide. Uh, at the successive COP uh, education, which was essentially absent in, in Marrakesh, where I have been, 
is coming into the COP uh, in uh, Glasgow and uh, this year, in, uh, last year in, in Dubai, we have organized with UNESCO a teacher's COP, which has been an extremely interesting uh, co confrontation with uh, teachers coming both from uh, the developed world and various communities, like the one I have quoted, to express their wishes and their difficulties about uh, science education about climate change. We hope to do more in Baku, and thank you again to UNESCO for uh, working together so well, Nigel.